story in which my country, Britain, is in many ways the villain. So it was surprising when after decades in the shadows, Burma's royal family decided to share their story with an Englishman. My name is Hu So Wing. I'm the great grandson of King Thibaw, the last king of Burma. My great grandfather lost his kingdom and was exiled with his family to India. Hundred years after he died, he is still entombed in India. The British government refused permission for him to be transported home. I'm Myanmar. I want to walk only for Myanmar. This country was giving us a present to Queen Victoria. That's a New Year present. You just imagine, this is a country, not a thing to give us a present. Now we are gaining some dignity, what we have lost before. I first met So Win in 2014 when he was managing the national under 19s football team after decades as a civil servant. He seemed almost defined by national duty, and as I got to know more about him, it wasn't hard to see why. If history had taken a different course, So Win would be the king of Burma today. This is Golden Palace. This is where our great-grandfather was exiled. This is the story. Very good beginning, not a very good end. We call it Golden Palace. But actually, this is rebuilt, reconstructed, not the original ones. Original ones were destroyed in Second World War. Do you think they've done a good job? Oh. <laughs> I'm not happy to be here around, but then I try to see, uh, accommodate and try to help you, but I, personally, I do not want to be here. Since 1885, the palace grounds have been used as a military base, first by the occupying British and now by the country's armed forces. When I came in, I have to give my uh, identity, and I'm very disappointed, yes. Next, I will not come again next time. Were you ever worried that they wouldn't let you in? No, no, it, uh, no I've, I'm very confident they cannot do that. But you'd prefer that they didn't ask for your ID on the door? No, my, my wife said, don't say anything. <laughs> I was about to. <laughs> Why? Why not? Oh, no, no, they, they, they don't understand. They, they, they are the soldiers. If I say something, then they will surprise. Hey, are you joking? Hey, are you actor? Or see, hey, you, you, this is not the place to joke. They will not believe it. And they, they, they will not believe I'm great grandson of the king. And, and who, nobody will say like this. Only the, those who are not with the... Uh, <laughs> so this is the situation, yeah. So Win is by the railway in the country's largest city, Yangon. Thousands pass by his house every day, unaware of the royal midst. My classmates, they're always joking me. 
hey, when are you going to take back the palace? They encouraged me. Hey, you have to fight for it. They are telling in front of others, hey, he's a great grandson of King Debo. And everybody's looking and see, everybody, hey, you know this mustache man? He's a great grandson of King Debo. And he's going to take back the royal palace. Is it true? It's very embarrassing, see? <laughs> What was interesting was that a lot of people had no idea what had happened to their royal family. I was intrigued that the king had been exiled uh, not too far away from where I live and that I knew nothing about it. I know that the third generation from King Thibault is still alive, not all of them, but a couple of them. I think a lot of ordinary people don't even know that uh, descendants and members of the immediate royal family are, are still around. But again, this was something that was very submerged and very hidden for, for quite a long time over the late 20th century. There were just so many stories, stories within stories. The incredible twists and turns their lives took was, I mean, really stranger than any credible work of fiction that one could have written. The position of the monarchy was all-pervading. I mean, they were regarded as demigods. Ruler of the land and sea, lord of the rising sun, king of all the umbrella-bearing chiefs, master of many white elephants. Everything they ate was out of gold bowls, gold spoons. Even the spittoon they spat into was made of solid gold. It was an institution that had lasted for so many centuries. So it was in the psyche of the people. It was a militant, aggressive in many ways, expansionist power that dominated the entire landscape from Bhutan to Malaya until they realized that there was another regional power, the British East India Company, which was expanding fast in India. The Third Anglo-Burmese War lasted only a couple of weeks, but the pacification of the country lasted many years and cost thousands of lives and the displacements of tens of thousands of other people. So it was a violent transition. This is a cartoon from Punch magazine, made in 1885, of the British soldier booting out a drunken Thibaut. Uh, with his brandy bottle falling off as he's booted out. Sad thing is King Thibaut never drank. He was just portrayed as a drunken to justify England's reason for throwing out an uh, incapable king. In the morning, they were told that the British forces had arrived in Mandalay. That night, probably nobody slept in the palace. I think it was a huge shock to them um, when they realized that the British was not accepting their armistice, uh, you know, request. I don't think the British had imagined that they would depose the king so quickly. So no preparation had been made for his exile. Where would he be sent? Where would the long-term stay be? No house had been prepared. So they said, we want King Thibaut in a place where he's going to be safe, well looked after, and completely forgotten. Those days, the only access to Ratnagiri was by ship. And four months of the year, it was totally cut off because of the monsoons. As one of the British officers put it, only the most intrepid traveler would go to Ratnagiri to see the king. He died of a broken heart, I feel. The queen wanted to carry him back to Burma, but the British didn't want that. So they decided that he had to be entombed in a permanent tomb in Ratnagiri. And they selected the site and they insisted that he be entombed before she left the shores of India. Queen Supyanath was entombed in Rangoon. 
And I think the family still feels that it's not a final entombment. This is the tomb where the last queen was buried. Hardly anyone knows that she came back at all, let alone that she's been buried in the heart of Yangon for more than 90 years. But Sowin's cousin, Devi, is the queen's great-granddaughter, and she's grown up next door. We are the royals. But that royal blood is for people and for our country. We have a duty to do, because that blood is running in our body. I want to talk freely as princess, but for me alone, I have to create my own space, you see, as an environmentalist. Like her cousin, so Wynne, not being on a throne hasn't dampened Debbie's sense of duty. I shall be called Green Princess. We are the human beings, so we must look after our home. This is the Earth planet. ပါဝင်းကျင်ဆိုတာတစ်ပင်စိုက်တာနဲ့အမှိုက်ကောက်တာတာတင်မဟုတ်ပါဘူးနိုင်ငံတော်နဲ့ပြူသူအတွက်အ
You have so many kids today and young people in their 20s and 30s who know almost nothing about the history of this country beyond a few lines that they might remember from school. Who was the last king of Burma? Where is Steve O'Mail? <laughs> He's done. He's done. <laughs> Very good. It's deeply unhelpful the way in which history is taught. History has been so devalued and so linked to political agenda in this country. People's connection to their past is lost. It's important in any country, but in a country where people are really trying to think about what their options are, uh, what they want to see 20, 30 years down the road in terms of the way in which their country and society evolves, I think it's an it's, it's, uh, indispensable thing uh, for people to have a more nuanced and complex sense of their history. in charge worked hard to keep them out of the spotlight. But the government was finally relaxing its grip, and they'd given the family permission to gather publicly in the old royal capital of Mandalay. It was a rare outing for the king's only surviving granddaughter, 94-year-old Auntie Sue. <laughs> Life is a very complicated matter. Hmm? My grandparents were the king and the queen of Burma. And then the annexation came. My parents were in trouble. The Japanese came. They were in trouble. And the people were shot and slapped and these things, you know. And seeing this, all this miserable life, I just took life as it came. I didn't, I didn't sort of repent on anything. This is the first time that we have the opportunity to do this. The other years we, we were not permitted to do it. Nobody is trying to re-erect the monarchism. We don't want any more troubles in the country, especially from the royal family. ไปมาแล้วกูไปเนี่ยเนี่ยมาโอ้ไม่มาโอ้ไม่ไปเนี่ยเนี่ยมาโอ้ไม่ไปเนี่ยเนี่ยกูจะมาเนี่ยกูจ
Burmans are still mad about their kings. You go anywhere in Upper Burma and ask, people still go and pay their respect to the throne. Who? You mean? Yeah, yeah. All oh. up one, not one left. Hello. I do. Now you are looking younger. You see all the happy faces. See all our uh, relatives, descendants, and this is my very first time to be with them. You're sat here at the front, which makes you quite special. Yes, because we are the only surviving direct descendant. We don't know when we're going to pop up. <laughs> I told you, my sister and pastor were wife leaving. That's why I tell Dewey, let me go where I want to go before I die. <laughs> You must stand straight there, sit straight there. Huh? You must sit straight there. <laughs> this is only the beginning, I believe. Before, this kind of occasion is not uh, much uh, recognized by the authorities. It was a rare day in the spotlight for the family. Watching them, it struck me how even now, 130 years after the annexation, this country was still dealing with the legacy of a British act of war that almost no one in my country even knew about. In 1948, after over a century of interfering in Burma, Britain rapidly withdrew, leaving a nation divided and traumatized. The Constituent Assembly, representing the people of Burma, have decided that Burma's future as an independent country should lie outside the British Commonwealth. We're sorry to think... Burma's new leaders faced the enormous Burma, task of uniting the many ethnic and religious groups. The country quickly descended into civil war, and in 1962, a young general emerged, promising to restore order and unite the nation. The bureaucracy he built dominated politics for half a century. But it failed to put an end to the fighting, which still rages today. Ah, he was a real despot. Took everything and do his hands. I knew him as a colonel. He was, I mean, more liberal then. But then he... he, he he had the taste of power, and power corrupts. At the core of modern Burmese politics has been this negative reaction to the way in which people felt the country was pulled into the 20th century. There was a desire to go back to something that people thought was authentic and, and pre-colonial. The military regime that took over in 1962, really, though it was an extreme sort of version of that, it did reflect this kind of wider sentiment of wanting to put the Burmese back in charge of the country. We lived nearly 60 years in the dark days. There is no trust. There is no light. We can't do anything. So now, the road to democratic country, we have to build. In 2015, Burma held its first credible election in more than 50 years. The country was pinning its hopes on veteran democracy activist Aung San Suu Kyi to lead her party to power after almost two decades under house arrest. People across the country seized their chance to have a say in how their country was run. You woke up very early? Yes. <laughs> After this, he's going to sleep again. <laughs> Usually, they woke up very late. <laughs> 
<laughs> Means already voted. Uh, you can't go again. You cannot. <laughs> The election is a big step forward. But while fighting across the country goes on, the military will continue to hold the balance of power in a system known as disciplined democracy. And the voice of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, General Min Online, still carries huge weight. Despite reservations, the election ushered in a level of freedom and opportunity the Burmese hadn't known in decades. For So Win, that meant one thing. It was time to go to India and start work on bringing his great-grandfather home at last. How are you feeling about going to Ratnagiri? Oh, I think, I think, uh, it's not, not a vacation, I think. <laughs> it's a kind of a never-ending story that we wish to end, not in a tragic way, to make everybody happy. Myanmar, India, and British also, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure, yeah. This is my fifth or sixth time, I think. Checking, rechecking. <clears throat> This is a never-ending mission, I can believe. Of course, the more you are involved, the more you have to do. Lions never eat grass. They will rather die if there is nothing to eat. So this is the kind of spirit in our family. Tapes remained hidden until now. I take this. Huh? I take everything now. Huh? In 1993, we performed the last rites that was not performed when my great grandfather passed away. There are no gates. There are big trees coming out from the tombs. It was in a, an imaginable stage that is about to be demolished or disappeared. This belongs to our history, in our history also. These are the floor plans of the royal residence to which King Tibor moved. It's quite a grand building. It was on 27 acres of land. There were 16 spacious rooms. The king by then had been so beaten into submission that he called it the palace. I feel at home because these settings are very familiar with me. Do you see that these uh, chairs? These are the original ones? Oh, yes. May I sit down for a while? Yeah? Just to pose. Oh. Yeah. Okay. See, you see this? This is the way that, like this. Very majestic seats. Yeah.
the last king of Burma is buried in a run-down corner of Ratnagiri. Next to his tomb stands an empty shell, intended for his eldest daughter who died here, leaving a new Indian branch of the royal family behind. Her ashes were last seen in the local tax office, and the family is still searching for them. Ordinarily, I do not want to be a royal. No, become a royal means have lots of responsibilities. But I cannot see deny that because the blood inside me is reminded me. Just now, I got the feeling. Your Majesty, let us leave from here. We'll be here again very soon to follow up your return back home. ceremony in Yangon to mark Pardamu, the day when King Thibor was sent into exile and Burma was changed forever. Our the last king and queen had been sent to Ratanagiri by British government. That's <laughs> called the Pardamu. <laughs> but December 2016 marked a hundred years since the king died in India. And in this centenary year, So Win was granted permission to hold a special ceremony at the Golden Palace in Mandalay, the place where the exile story began. It was a bit of a change from having to show his ID at the door just two years earlier. This is the place where the country belongs. We lost everything since 1885 because they came here and took the country by force. We can call it the warring British. Tomorrow is the 131st Paramu day. We never held this kind of Paramu ceremony before in this place. This will be the very first time. <laughs> Your dad seems to be really enjoying himself. Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's, he's very excited. He's been waiting for this day as well. <laughs> so, would you call this a normal family reunion? Yes, I guess so. Grand family reunion? Yeah. Would that be a <laughs> more proper um, phrase, I guess? Before, we are not even thinking of asking permission because it's never going to happen. But nowadays, there are many changes. This was a historic milestone for the royal family. But watching So Win, I was starting to wonder how the rest of the family felt about the direction he was taking. Going forward, it's a step by step. Of course, my dad's ambition is a long term ambition. Tanzin and my father, right now, you probably seem as if they have diverted. But in a way, when times comes, I think they were, I mean, were mutually blocked away. Inspired by the success of the day, So Win decided to take the whole family to India to mark the exact day of the last king's death. And at the same time, dozens of senior monks informed him they were coming too. And so was the head of the armed forces. Because oh. now I think it's coming bigger and bigger. I just met one of the senior monks who is accompanying us. That's why we are late. This is the history for our country, for the centenary.
While So Win celebrated in Mandalay, Devi stayed in Hong Kong to oversee the Parlamu ceremony as she always had. But try as she might, she couldn't avoid the excitement that was building around the family. <laughs> เออดีเนี่ยก็รอทุกๆชาๆบ่เลยยังกงมาเสะอนาชินแลออกมาเนาะดีอสองอสอกเด็กบ่ตะเมียเอ๋ลาพี่รอตะเรนอยู่แลด
I know the American system of how the government are running in America, and also in, the, in your place, also in all, all over the world. I do not like party politics, really, because party is for the power. So, what are you going to substitute to develop our countries? With which system? With the monarch? You must choose it. Because, uh, okay, I think of that. And do you have any idea? What? You got any idea? In, in yes, it? I've got the idea of okay. my own. So you, can you explain a brief on yes. that? Yes. Please, kindly, and I will answer I'm my own. I'm based on humans. You see, Buddhists or Islam or Christians or black or white or leftists or rightists. I don't care. I base it on human. Oh, you're too high. Oh, but why? Too high. No, we are all humans. Why <laughs> that's you call too high? <laughs> You, you, you might, you same, might, you might be a saint. We want this country to be strong, to have our own system, to value ourselves. We need to work together very closely among our Myanmar people, because Myanmar has many nationalities. Why fighting each other? You know who started this? The then British. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I, but, but. but they have to still, they have to mention many stories, I think. No, about no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Watching you two have very different opinions. You're still in the family. You still talk <laughs> to each other. Yeah, why not? This is the this natural. We are the cousin, only first cousin. From same family, there's a different ways of ideas, thinking. Just call it you... unity and diversity. <laughs> because we have, we have to be united, but we have diversity uh, <laughs> way of thinking. What would you say that you agree on? The betterment of this country, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. On, on our own ways. Because she is the internationalist. See? I'm Myanmar, so I want to work only for Myanmar. <laughs> See? Really? Then not, this not, is not... a very big difference. Yes, platform. you know. You see, course, you know, this is a very different, big platform. You know it's why? It's only working for Myanmar. So, what will you choose? Only for the little Myanmar? For the whole world? After we gained independence, there was one very big movement to bring back the remains of the King Tibor. Even the Prime Minister, who knew, decided to donate 50,000 chats, I think, for the donation for that cause. You know what happened? The then British ambassador informed the then Prime Minister, who knew, you know, what the phrase he used, the British ambassador, let the sleeping dog lie. After a lifetime of anonymity, So Win flew into a military airstrip with the most powerful man in the country, General Min On Lai. Accompanied by dozens of the country's yeah, top yeah, soldiers, yeah, politicians, yeah, and whole yeah, yeah. <laughs> All there to mark the centenary of his great grandfather's death. In one way, I think, to see the repatriation of King Thibault's remains, to have a proper burial, if for no other reason than to see a royal funeral and to see the ritual and the imagery that would go with that would be very interesting. I don't think it would necessarily be an unwelcome thing. Whether it would be the best thing, I think, is a different question. Senior General wishes to bring back home. 
vice president and senior generally said, why not bring this back home? Yes, we are trying for many years. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> the day of the centenary had finally arrived and the town was buzzing with press and police, all keen to hear what So Win had to say. So my question is to Mr. Sovin. In the morning, we met one of the visitors who said that they are planning to take the remains of the Raja to Myanmar. Are there any plans like that? As a personal, I like to take it back. From the very beginning, they are not wanted to come here, but they were being forced to. This is a kind of a human situation. We lost everything. I'd like to make you another question to you. If you were in my place, what would you say? It was exactly a hundred years ago that the last king of Burma died here, thousands of miles from home. When I first started following the story of the Burmese royal family, I thought it would be a story about the past. But now I realize this wasn't history at all. Britain's legacy in this corner of the world is still raw. And the next chapter of our shared story was being written right in front of me. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> of the exile of the king was huge on Burma. Having a king on the throne was a sense of security, a sense of who they were. It led to a lot of unrest, a lot of loss of identity, their religion being violated. Institutions that had existed for generations, suddenly everything disappeared. ဟောင်ငါရကိုးစဲ့ကိုးနေမှာအရှေ့အိန္ဒိယကုန်ပြီးဒီရှက်တီးအိန္ဒိယကုန်ပြီးကိုတည်တောင်ကြီးကြယ
I don't want to walk internationally or do human beings. Or it's too, too far or too high. Or it's very simple. If the country's future is bright, we all will be bright also. We are part of the country. We are part of the citizen. We are just a simple family. We can say before we are the lost rail. Not anymore now. Now in 21st centuries, we must understand each other. We doesn't hate. Myself will mostly can hate British, but not the British peoples, only the one group who has earned for the power those days, not the British people. People are saying, Do you like to bring back the monarchy? No. It's not the time, it's the 21st century. <laughs> but the new generations must learn the histories, the countries, the kings and queens. You must not forget. I don't want to be a, a king. Nobody is asking me to be a king yet. But if I do not want to go if, I, if, so there is no way of going to the level of if. I don't want to restore monarchy. Because our country has suffered a lot. There's never been an inclusive identity that has been allowed to emerge in this country. If that is not corrected in some way, you may see an end to the armed conflicts, but I think you will still not have the kind of society that will be able to cope with a lot of the problems to come. Awareness of the royal family in Burma would help people understand their past. It's a reclamation of history which is possible now, which was not possible under many years of military rule. Do you have any, any message for the British? No, I wish them luck, that's all I know. <laughs> we always wanted the kings and the queen's body to be brought back. But what to do? Times have changed. Things have changed, people's outlook have changed. So let, let them lie in peace, man. I always wear flowers in my hair, especially jasmine. My mother told me, if you don't have jasmine, at least wear a flower. One flower in your hair, you will look more royalty. So I always have. Not because I want to be a royalty, but because I want to be pretty. <laughs>